Hi everyone. Uh, those outside, if you would like to see the giant ball and bike biking 50 feet above, above the ground, then you can come in the auditorium and uh, uh, watch me biking from the string. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, I'm Paul. And uh, the reason why I posted this picture, this was actually taken during our uh, team building in the Philippines um, about with the uh, APAC team uh, just two weeks ago. So, uh, any anyone knows what's ionic? Ionic, Angular, REST API, JSON API, here maps. That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. But these are ingredients that um, that's really good uh, in building mobile application. So Ionic was actually created by the Drifty company in 2013. Uh, Ionic is a HTML5 mobile app development framework. Uh, let me tell you a story. When I was in college, I, that was in 2005. Uh, that was the time that PHP is still gaining its popularity. Um, there's no resources over the internet. So you ha I had to buy a book um, authored by Tom Welling. I don't know if, uh, if you know that uh, author. And um, there's no, D uh, I mean, there's no DVD at that time. So uh, installing PHP and MySQL took us two months to install. I mean, just PHP, MySQL, and um, yeah, uh, and. Since there's no DVD, uh, we have like uh, disk one, install disk two, and then when you are in ready in the disk 10, up oh, error, you repeat it again until everything is not working. And <clears throat> I mastered PHP in my college days, and then I wanted to build mobile application. At that time, the mobile application technology is Java and you have to study separately uh, five inches thick of mobile application book. So um, it was, I was a frustrated uh, mobile developer at that time. And when HTML5 came in, it was, it was really, I mean, it was really good because uh, being a PHP developer, and jumping in a mobile development sphere is not so hard because you know already JavaScript, you know already HTML, you know already CSS. So if you're a, a PHP developer, um, it's easier for you to jump in and become a mob mobile developer using uh, HTML5 framework like uh, Cordova or PhoneGap. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Titanium App Accelerator. And um, so that one. And so Ionic is the new one in the market. Uh, Ionic is pretty new. It's based in Angular. And uh, it's a cross-platform mobile app development. And um, a lot of our using uh, there are options in building uh, uh, applications like uh, 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 PhoneGap or uh, there's the React React Native. So, and there are three types of application: the web, which is uh, just the uh, uh, HTML, your HTML5, CSS and uh, uh, doing mobile responsive thing. And then of course your native, which basically you have to learn uh, 
the native uh, of Android or the C++ or if you're looking into uh, uh, iOS and you have to uh, dive in the Kotlin and of course the hybrid so hybrid is the new in the market that uh, enables PHP developer like me to build a mobile application and that's what we are gonna talk about this, this afternoon so as you can see here the web like uh, probably you're familiar with Asana and Basecamp and if you're diving into native application then uh, you're looking into Skype um, your favorite game um, your Instagram so these are the, the, the things that you can do uh, uh, like the example of the native application so why Ionic <clears throat> there's actually a lot of reason why uh, number one it's an open source it's number two it's cross-platform you can develop uh, Windows you can Windows mobile you can develop Android or uh, iOS in just one base code and it's free of cost so no licensing fees that you need to take care of um, it's based in uh, Apache Cordova so Apache Cordova is really huge that a lot of cross-platform frameworks are using it phone gap using it um, and uh, a lot of a lot of them so it has a deploy live updates like for example you've already application in your Google Store uh, Google Play and then you have some updates so you don't need to apply again for a submission of your application and wait for another two weeks before it gets rolled out so you just need to push your live updates and anyone that uses that application will receive that updates so that's actually one of the one of the best things that I like with um, Ionic and if you're familiar with Angular this is really good because uh, it has a very uh, uh, easy learning curve so it's easy peasy and it's based in TypeScript and then the last one is it has a very strong community so you will get a lot of support from the community so Ionic is really just uh, very simple when you you know you just do four commands Ionic start your app in the name of your application and then blank and it will create the the basic structure of your mobile application and then uh, you can and then to run it you just need to run the command ionic serve or ionic lab so that's uh, very simple and uh, this is how it looks like um, the generated codes it looks like this um, if you're into angular the component export um, very JavaScript-ish. We don't need to uh, check line by line, but we'll discuss that. In, and then this is the HTML part. So if you know HTML5, then it's just uh, very simple. If you're also doing React.js, it, it looks similar, but uh, I think the only changes there are the tags. The Ionic tags. <clears throat> All right. So um, for everyone that uh, just came in, I'm Paul. I I'm one of the superheroes in the in Pantheon, and I'm working with this bunch of heroes. Maybe one of them, probably if you're if you had some issues before at Pantheon, and uh, um, yeah. So. <clears throat> Uh, right now we are 13 uh, superheroes in the Philippines servicing um, the APAC time zone, the US time zone, and the European time zone. And I also do, I actually 
lead the Drupal Philippines uh, in the Philippines. I organize uh, Drupal camps. And this group is actually the leaders of different communities in the Philippines. Uh, that's Python, the Women Who Code, Coding Girls. So in the Philippines, we, are, we have this uh, group of community. These are the leaders. So uh, everything we shared, uh, lessons learned, organizing their events, and sharing information, sharing notes. So it was a good, uh, <clears throat> wonderful conversation with the, with the community. And this is actually the sample of the pictures from our recent Drupal camps. Um, the last one, that's um, uh, uh, on your right. That was Drupal Camp Manila just like two months ago, uh, where 350 people attended the events. So we're gearing towards the students, and 60% uh, of the attendees are students. So, and we're also working with together with the coding girls uh, there. And uh, don't you know that in the Drupal Camp Manila, uh, the population, the, I think 50%, 60% are women attended the Drupal Camp. And uh, that's because of the coding girls helping us uh, organize the event. All right, so let's go back to how, how to install Ionic 3. I remember when I was, um, this, I used to do mentoring in the hackathon in the Philippines. And <clears throat> um, joining a hackathon and building mobile application, if you're using Ionic, it's easy peasy. You just need to have a, a Node.js, you just need to install NPM, so Cordova, Ionic, and boom, you can already create your mobile app. <clears throat> uh, you don't need to install the Android SDK, like, or if you're uh, using uh, uh, Android SDK, you have to install the two gig of data. Oh, that's terrible. Probably with the internet connection in the Philippines, uh, maybe the 24 hour is done, you're not yet finished downloading those stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, but Ionic, <clears throat> uh, even if you have a s slow internet, you can still uh, install this in less than uh, 30 minutes. So let's talk about here maps. Here map. I don't know if you're familiar with here maps. Uh, can you? Anyone in the room use here maps? Anyone, guys? No. All right. Um, here maps is actually you've been using that. You've been using Facebook, right? The mapping application, the mapping provider of Facebook is here maps, and then you're using Uber too. So Uber using here maps map maps and uh, Microsoft they're using uh, here maps technology, but the question is why is it that in the developers community they don't know or they're not familiar with it? Uh, probably because here maps was designed to cater for because um, I think the history is gearing towards the car automotives so they're a nab tech before so they're really more into car uh, computer systems mapping system and now here maps is gearing towards uh, development and they're uh, encouraging developers to use the technology and I am jumping into that uh, together with the here maps technology we are partnering in the Philippines so it's just very simple. This is how it looks like, the, the map. <clears throat> and um, in Europe and North America, four to five in the four to, four to five of car with in-car navigation for is actually using peer maps. And um, yeah, so 8,000 employees, 56 countries, uh, they're really uh, growing. And hopefully, the developers will start uh, using them. So these are the top users that I know. And um, so now, how are we going to use that? So just simple, 
just go to the developer sites, uh, have the developer's key. It's, I think, the, the 90 days uh, free. And then you can have this sample HTML and with a bunch of JavaScript libraries. And then just put the app ID and uh, application code, and you're, up, you're good to go. And this is how it looks like when you generate that. But the question is, why would I use that if there's Google Map? And in Drupal, I don't think Peer Maps is being used. I'm 100% I'm sure of that. Because if you're using Liplet, if you check Liplet, there's no Peer Maps. So I actually submitted a patch uh, in the Liplet More, Maps More uh, module so that you can actually use Peer Maps. So uh, I will post the link with that. I actually contributed that, uh, that module so that uh, people can, can try it out. Um, it's just easy. And I'll be using here maps in my presentation. So now, let's, um, part of this Drupal 8 REST API has been discussed already with a uh, previous speaker. So in my case, uh, I've used Leaflet. Uh, I've used REST UI. Just the basic modules. I did not use a lot of uh, unnecessary modules. And just uh, enable the content, the file, the user registration method, the resource. And I'm using, uh, I'm using uh, the authentication. I'm using basic auth. So, <clears throat> I uh, need to generate a uh, uh, token to be able to post. <clears throat> now, so if you're using basic auth auth authentication, um, there's a problem when getting the data, fetching the data. But the problem is if, you, if you're posting data. So you need to have this course. So by default, this is uh, disabled. On, in Pantheon, you need to make sure that this is created. So you just need to have the service YAML and make sure that you enable the course. So course, this is actually, uh, will, it will allow you to, uh, to this is, a, I mean, to allow you to open application with different domain. So this is really a very dangerous uh, settings here if you're putting this in a production site. So, but in, in our case, this is just a development. So, everything is allowed. So, I allowed all headers, I allowed all methods, and then I allowed origin. So, that's line number eight is really sensitive. So, if you're just allowing that to a particular site, then you need to uh, specify it there. And these are my, uh, my lessons learned. So make sure that the X CSRF token has no white spaces. So sometimes uh, when you submit or when you uh, post, um, it works on your, in your browser, local machine, but it doesn't work on your mobile, on your mobile device. Because there are actually white spaces if it's running on your mobile, on your actual mobile device. The same with uh, sometimes there are special characters, so make sure you filter them out. Um, I had a problem that it works on my my local machine using my browser. It works 100%, but it doesn't work when I use it with my phone. And I actually figured it out for like a week. What, what's wrong? I've been, I've been changing servers. I, I even went out with Pantheon because it doesn't work. So I just realized that when running it in my actual mobile device, it basically attaching some characters. So make sure that you filter them out. So that's what I did. I just filtered them. So that when even, uh, regardless if you run it, if you run it on local machine or on mobile device, it works. All right, so let me pause there. Uh, I'd like to do some demo. Um,
So the name of the application, the, this is actually still on a beta phase. The name is Mapinas. <coughs> oh. There. So this is very simple, but I'm actually using um, Drupal 8. So let me do the demo. So this is how we do um, debugging. All right. Opening my application. So on, on your right side, that's the application that I'm actually opening. And <clears throat> on the left side, that's the, the back end, so that I can show you uh, the data that I've been, uh, that I will be submitting. So let me try to log in. I'm using my login account. So let me type in my username and password. All right, so this is how it looks like in my phone. Now I'm going to uh, create a collection. So, so what's a collection? This is actually used uh, to submit reports for uh, here maps like for example there's a location that is not um, that is not correct probably uh, the place is not existing anymore and you have to report it to here maps that hey there's no more Jollibee there it's KFC now so <clears throat> I'm going to uh, send a report uh, SGX One and uh, STX one. So this is the um, the here maps there. I will load it. It will detect. As you can see, I'm this is actually running on the debug mode. So I can check in my console if I'm having some issues. So I can actually drag. So. In my phone, it's actually showing up that sometimes the Chrome developer tools is buggy. So, I will take a picture of you. And send that. <clears throat> okay, then I will add another. So we'll reset the form and add another one. STX2. And put that in another room, the, the pointer. Actually, I moved the pointer to the other side.
If you have a wet here. <clears throat> I will take another picture. Okay. <clears throat> so another picture and I will submit this. Alright. So let's check that in our um. <clears throat> so this is very basic uh, map. So right now, so this is actually the one that we've sent. That's from our place this morning. I think this is ours. So, here's the photo that I submitted. And that's the, the second one. So now the, the, the question is, what's, what's behind this? Because <clears throat> um, I've been using App Accelerator PhoneGap uh, for the past few years. And the most difficult part is how to submit, how to... Uh, transmit that images to your uh, Drupal backend via REST API. And, and uh, let's go back to the presentation. <coughs> so this is the sign, the sign up REST API. Um, before I go to the, the coding, to the coding, to the actual coding in the Angular, I test it first in the, uh, the, the plugin. The, this is actually a Chrome plugin for REST API. It's, uh, so this is for how to create a node using API. And this is for update of the node. So I can, this is actually the most important tidbits in building an application and interacting with your Drupal 8. And then this is the, the auto-delete a node. And with the corresponding uh, setup. And this is how we handle image. <clears throat> As you can see, um, the URL is uh, Pantheon, uh, Pantheon site entity file. That's the, the, the path that I use post method. And then along with that, I actually send a JSON data. So together with the file name, the MIME type, the type, the value, and the base64 uh, data. And if, you're, if your image is big, this also becomes bigger and heavier. So <clears throat> it's, it's really hard if you're sending a large image to your mobile backend using Base64. But <clears throat> um, the, the strategy there is you make sure that the image that you generated is, is not that big. Probably you, just, uh, uh, you can tailor it by 50% so that it's not that big. And now, the question is, um, so when I submit, uh, when I submit the, the images uh, uh, together with the, with the form that I filled up, it actually creates two requests. First is, it requests, um, uh, it has to submit the, 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 the base 64 image pr coming from a camera. And then it will submit it, it will submit the base64 and then you from your Drupal backend it will send back with the FID with the, with the file ID of that image and then when you get that file ID then you send you send another request for creation of the node so there's two 
And there's a big news because uh, this coming, this release for Drupal 8.6, they're going to release a newer version. Um, it's no longer two requests, but it's just one request. And that's actually, uh, uh, let me, nope. So this is actually one of the one of the oldest uh, commit, which is actually the API first, which is supporting the Drupal, the sending of uh, Drupal file uh, of files via REST API. So that's going to be that's going to happen in the release for Drupal 8.6. So you, if if you're building, if you're creating. Uh, a node or creating a, uh, a data, you don't need to create multiple requests. Just one request and everything will be saved. So <clears throat> that is actually one of the, one of the things that I'm uh, waiting for, uh, for that release. So now, <clears throat> if we uh, if we go back to this, uh, sorry. actually I did a video about that. If, if, if it happens that there's no internet connection, uh, there's no need for that. Um, all right, so this is actually the JSON API uh, that I've used to fetch the data. So uh, now the question is, why would I use JSON API over the, just the normal JSON uh, fetch data, things like that? So if we, so these are the, so the, the first one is this is the fetching of the data. And if we're going to decipher that, it's basically uh, in, uh, adding the filter author with condition path, and then the username that you know it filter out what who uh, the user created that content, and then I'll and then I I can I can uh, specify what are the fields that I need to fetch. So if I just need title, UID created, uh, I don't need to, uh, I don't need the whole bunch of the node, uh, of the nodes. I just need title, UID created, and ID a new UID. And that's actually a relief. That's, I mean, um, based on, I mean, performance wise, this is really good because I don't need to, uh, to have a massive uh, amount of resources. And then I can also sort it out already. I can. Uh, I can set it for for the limit of how many uh, contents that I'm gonna fetch, and then JSON API is also uh, designed with caching, so uh, internally it, it already caches the data, and so that's why I, I I use JSON API for get method. I mean just fetching the data. So from the collection, here's already our, our uh, data that we've sent a while ago, STX101 and uh, STX2. Uh, we can delete that. Uh, and just uh, same projects. So basically, the, 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 what I'm pointing out here is sending of images and how to efficiently uh, send that 
to your uh, to your back end. Uh, <clears throat> that was the the difficult part uh, on that, especially on working on Drupal 8. But now um, everything's good, and and I'm encouraging everyone that if ever uh, you can uh, use that. <clears throat> so I'm actually using Ionic framework uh, in in taking care of the codes. So this is how it looks like. Um, so this is the Ionic framework. So you can uh, remember when we let's. Let me run this uh, video, a short video, uh, just to make sure that. <clears throat> okay, so this is the uh, Ionic. Uh, we will create um, a simple image, a uh, simple application, and then we will uh, see how the dashboard looks like and how the how it takes care of the uh, base code so ionic start Drupal camp it's a blank uh, ionic then it will ask you if you're going to use it on iOS or Android so for, for this uh, let's use uh, IO, uh, Android and then it will ask you uh, so at this point, it, it already builds the, the application. It, and it, uh, it says here that if, you're, if you want to, to upload this on your Ionic dashboard, you need to git push Ionic master. So it will appear it on your application in, in the dashboard. OK, let's do that. So this is the, the generated files when you did the, the Ionic start. So now it's pushing it's it it's it's pushing the code to the dashboard, <clears throat> and in the dashboard, um, this is how it looks like. So it's basically running the progress. It's like uh, Circle CI, so it will take care of your build, and then <clears throat> from there, it basically uh, logs everything if there's. Uh, something wrong with your codes, then it will it will start to log it in. So that is one of the features of the dashboard. And then another one is, so now now that I've already pushed my 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 application, so how how can I be how can I download that APK so I can install it manually in my phone? So there's actually a package tab here that you can basically. Uh, Build your package, and it will give you it will give you either a debug version or the release version. So the debug version that's what I uh, just used for the demo a while ago. That you can see the debugging things, and then um, uh, right now this is building the the release version of the package. So. Now the question is, why would I use this dashboard if I can actually run this on my on my terminal? Well, um, you can you can run it on your local machine, but it, it takes time because you still have to figure out your your certificates. You have to set up everything. But this one, you just need to push your changes, uh, build the package, and wait for the APK to be downloaded. So I think uh, for the for that basic blank application that will take probably five minutes to finish the building of the packages. There, it's uh, building in progress, and it's now uploading the APK to your to your to AWS so that you can. You can, you can download it. it, it can archive it for you. And then now it's build finish. So you can click the history and then uh, the download is ready for you. Just 
click the download and you can download the APK. So that is the beauty of this dashboard. So it will, uh, this is really good if you are working in a team. Um, so <clears throat> that is one. Um, So let's go back to this um, to this map. <clears throat> so as I uh, as I've said a while ago, I'm using Leaflet, and I created a patch so that we can use here maps, and and the 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 map provider is actually here maps. And that was recently this morning and. Yeah, I think um, that's all for my demonstration. So, uh, guys, any question? Okay, I forgot to mention. So, Leaflet is actually uh, a mapping module. I mean, it's a, it's actually a mapping provider. It can you can use it for a standalone mapping application. And in Drupal, there's actually, it can actually be integrated. There's an available leaflet module that you can use. And it, Vue supports it. So if you have a, um, let me show you the views that I created. So if you install those leaflet modules that I've showed you a while ago, you will have this uh, format, leaflet map. And once you have that, it will just create, uh, it will require you to have a geo information. So a geo information, you can install a geo field for that. So, uh, so in my case, I only have the geo information, the body and the photo. And it will, um, so these are the results. And it's, it's actually in a cluster. So that when you click that, it will, it's, it's not, it will not look like scatter, scattered. So I'm using cluster uh, setup using leaflet. So this is re uh, really easy to uh, set up. Just install the leaflet and then have uh, geo fields. So a geo fields, you need to have a, a geo field module installed in your Drupal. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyone? Yes, bro. Okay, uh, in my um, in in my experimentation, it doesn't support. You need to have a customization in order to have that. But in the case of here maps or even leaflet, so the, the the strategy is you create your views, you create a JSON, expose it, and then um, have that have that path and store that in your leaflet, and then have, have the leaflet uh, uh, parse it. So you can, yeah. Um, especially on Drupal 8, so there's no, there's no contrib module for that yet. Um, Guys, anyone?
Oh, um, another question is, now, um, if there's no question, I will ask a question. <laughs> All right, so, because uh, I really spent a lot of time in this, and there's no resources. I've been looking for this uh, over Drupal.org, and there's none. So now the question is, how are we going to get a geo information from the mobile device? So in your mobile device, there's actually a, uh, a sensor that gets your GPS, the, uh, GPS. So you can utilize the GPS to get that actual location. And what I did is, what's the role of here maps here? So once I, once I got the, the GPS information, I, I sent it to here maps to, get, uh, to give me the, the exact location in the map. So this is there. As you can see, I'm using local storage. Local storage is actually um, a storage that is being stored in your local browser. So what I did is when you drag the pointer, it will actually uh, set that coordinates to your local storage item. So as you can see, there's a market marker longitude, and then marker latitude. And then I, this is actually the the important tidbits that I've been studying for more than a week on how to figure out how to send the geo information over to the REST API. So fill geo information and then bracket, then value the longitude and then the latitude. And then Drupal will accept that. So wrong white space or any uh, syntax will, will, get, uh, will give you an error. It will not proceed. And uh, another question. So, um, how do we submit the uh, images? As I've, uh, as I've, as I've mentioned a while ago, we I we submit images by uh, by by a base sixty four uh, data. So where is base sixty four? Okay. That's actually a good question. Because um, in the current setup of Drupal 7, Drupal 8, you have to send it uh, in a batch manner. So if you have a big images, it will take time. And sometimes um, if, your, if your images is too big and your memory limit is not that uh, enough, it will give an error. That's why as much as possible, you make sure that it will not, uh, uh, in my case, I only have like 200 kbps, the maximum uh, number of image, because if it's higher, uh, you'll get uh, more errors. And, <clears throat> and the one that I mentioned that they're going to release in Drupal 8.6 is, it's not going to use uh, Base64 anymore. It's going to use uh, the, so as you can see, it says here, it is one of the longest issues in Drupal history <laughs> at 572 comments. Because a lot of people really like to, to have this uh, uh, feature to submit an image without using Base64. And uh, as you can see here, it says, uh, it will use application octet stream, so it can be able to uh, support video uh, video files and large images without uh, problem. And 
and it's much more reliable. And and according to the to the comment to the to the whole thread, um, even in in other communities, especially using REST API, this is actually the major problem on how to submit images. And this is and and what's the best thing here? Because it only only in our Drupal community that that this has been resolved. And I'm waiting for that 8.6. All right, so any, oh yes, yes sir. Oh yeah. Um, I think uh, that's actually uh, part of that uh, features. So uh, that's going to be. No, no. Uh, yeah, so this one is actually raw image. It's not base 64 anymore. Uh, this one, the, the new version. So I think that's already resolved, the, the example for information. All right, so guys, I know this is really uh, a bit uh, advanced for others. Um, even myself, I'm still, uh, especially in submission of these images, uh, I just figured this out a couple of weeks ago. So, um, all right. So thank you guys, and I hope you've learned something from my uh, my presentation, and and I hope that you can also start uh, using Hear Maps. Yeah, just give it a try. Um, uh, look into the offline version. Yes. 